Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to the Not Hebrew School podcast. I am Aaron Eisman. I'm here with Lizzie Savetsky. How are you doing today, Lizzie? Baruch Hashem, Rabbi E. Very excited to learn some Torah with you, as we, always. We are going to jump right in. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this week is the portion of Vayera. Vayera is the story of the plagues. Uh, Vayera is the second parsha in the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus is the Jewish people coming out of Egypt. And this week's Torah portion is a big part of the Exodus with the first seven of the ten plagues. At the end of last week's Torah portion, Moses' efforts seemed to fail with Moses going to Pharaoh and Pharaoh increasing the work. And this week, we have the first seven plagues. The first plague was blood. The second plague was frogs. The third plague was lice. The fourth plague was wild animals. The next plague was the death of the livestock. The next one was boils. The next one was hail, right? And that's the first seven. So let us jump right in. These are the, the plagues. And each time Pharaoh said, Moses says, if you don't let the Jewish people go, you're going to get a plague. And Pharaoh refuses. And he begs them to take away the plague. We know the story. But it just seems like such a strange story. Why? This is God, right? This is the infinite. Like, why is he sort of playing around with Pharaoh? Like, you know, I don't know, maybe just freeze all the Egyptians and just let the Jews go out. Like, or make a invisible wall, whatever, and, and just, like, just go. What is the reason for 10 plagues? Why, why do we need plagues what is what is the point of god bringing plagues that's question number one what do you say Remington? um i guess to um prove to the jewish people that um that there's somebody you know behind the mask of nature okay okay very 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 or nice something. very nice okay let's 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 Fast forward a little bit, when the Jewish people came out of Egypt, right? They came out of Egypt. Why, right? People, people don't realize what Moses said to Pharaoh. He didn't just say, let my people go. He said, let my people go to serve me. That's what God says. Let my people go. We know, oh, let my people go. No, let my people go to serve me, right? So we're, we're coming. How do we serve God? We came to Sinai to get the, the, we get the Torah. So the first of the Ten Commandments the very first of the Ten Commandments is, Anochi Hashem Lokecha Asher Tzisicha Meirat Mitzvah Meirat I am Hashem who took you out of Egypt. Now, you know, it, it is impressive that God took us out of Egypt, but this is God. You know, He's the creator of heavens and earth, right? Wouldn't you think that God would introduce Himself by His perhaps more impressive accomplishment? Like, right. I am God who created heaven and earth. Why would God introduce himself by the one who took you out of Egypt? So I think that the, the both answers are the same uh, and, and very much what you, what you mentioned before. Why is God saying, I'm God who took you out of Egypt? Because if I'm the creator of heaven and earth, the world is so big, is so gigantic. Right, we know of galaxies 13 billion years away. Do you know what that is? That means if you get into a rocket ship that's traveling at the speed of light, which is 186,000 miles a second, you will not get to the end of our known universe for 13 billion years. So we might think that. I mean, God is so big, you know, and I have a report due on Tuesday. Like, God help me. It's like, come on, get, you know, get with the program. Like, yeah, like, it's quick, true. Figure it out yourself. I'm, I'm running, I'm running this. <laughs> figure like, out your report. <laughs> yeah. Does God actually care? Exactly. exactly. That's the question. Exactly. Exactly. That, and if, you know, the world is, it, you know, it's, as you mentioned before, the world is going crazy. And I think that perhaps as a spiritual doctor, we can uh, diagnose the world with this ailment, 
of that question. Does God really care? Does God really care? And this week's Torah portion answers that question with a resounding, with these with 10 resounding plagues that says, I am intimately involved in your life and I will manipulate nature and, and anything you need, I am there. You can have a personal relationship with me. I am the Lord your God who took you out of Egypt. We can have a connection. We can have that relationship. And the truth be told is that if we look at our own lives, we can see, although maybe not such obvious plagues, but pretty in your face, pretty obvious plagues. We keep our eyes open. If we, if we keep, if we, if we stay, are in tune to what's going on around us, there's so many times when we see the hand of God. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a, I don't remember who I heard this from, but I think it's a beautiful idea. You know, the, the student asked the rabbi, says, Rabbi, prove to me that there's a God. Uh, prove to me God. And the rabbi says, are you adopted? So he says, no, I'm not adopted. So he says, how do you know I'm not adopted? He says, I know. Says, how do you know? I know. How do you know? So, did you ever take a DNA test? No, but I know. How do you know? So how, how do we know? Let's say uh, my sister, I do have a, a sister who's adopted, but, uh, but, but I personally am not adopted. But let's say someone is not adopted. How do they know they're not adopted? And, and most, many people would say, I know. Uh, I'm not. Yeah. It's, it's a you knowledge. say I look like my mom or dad, but still, how do you know? Are yeah, you, exactly. You don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I act like my dad. How do you know? Right. Okay. Right. So, so how do you know? So here's a beautiful idea. You know how you know? Because your knowledge is based on so many, op, uh, so many times when that fact was drilled into me. They, my mom made me lunch and my mom made me dinner and she took me to the doctor and she took me to the soccer practice and she 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 called me in college and she paid my tuition and and all these all these interactions I internalize so that this belief is a knowledge. In other words, I know it. It's such a strong belief that it's a knowledge. And therefore, if you ask me, am I adopted? Even though I didn't take the DNA test, I can say I know I'm not adopted, even though I, even though I don't know. But it's so many pieces of belief brought together to bring knowledge, and we need to realize if we're going to get this world out of this mess that we ne- we need to start having that relationship with God. Notice those miracles in our lives, and it doesn't have to be out of the ordinary miracles. If we open up our eyes this morning. You say, wow, I can, wow, that's, that's such a miracle. Wow, I can see. That's so beautiful. I was able to stand up. Wow, I can stand, right? right. If, if, if we're healthy and, you know, if you didn't sleep in a park bench last night and, and you're not waiting for a kidney and you're not waiting, right, and, and, and we're not waiting for some scary test results and, and or even if we are, and, and just to see yeah. the, the blessings in our lives, and use them as opportunities to connect to, to the infinite. Yeah. And that's a message of the 10 plagues. Each one of the plagues, the first three, the second three, the, 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 right, the, 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 the God's dominion over land, right? But the land, the beneath the land, and then the, the uh, living space, and then the, the sky. God is saying, I am here for you. Right. I want to have a relationship with you. And, 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 and you can always reach out. And, right. it, you know, often people say to me, Rabbi, how do I get there? What do I do? Yeah. You, don't have to, you don't have to get anywhere. You're already yeah. there. We're already right. parts of the infinite. We're, we're a piece of the infinite. We already are there. We just have to sort of not get distracted, not get fearful, not get right. worried. Stop reading the news. <laughs> and, right. and, and just like, like let go and let Surrender. go. And, and and just be be open to receiving, and that's right. it's uh that's that's the message of the plague. And I'll just just to end, and I want to I want to hear your thoughts, Robinson. Why do we not? Why do we have such a hard time with this? And uh, you know, I think you know the answer is very strong. In when Moshe came to Jewish people, 
and he, Moshe Rabbeinu he came and said, I'm, com- I'm coming to save you. I'm coming to save you from your from your slavery. And he's, and lo shomu a Moshe mekotza ruach ha'avod ha'kasha. It's almost funny. They weren't able to listen to Moshe because they were too out of breath. Mekotza ruach, their shortness of breath, ha'avod ha'kasha. And from the hard work. So he's like, hey, I'm here to save you. No, 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 I can't stop. Right? It's like you're working, like imagine you're walking home with your packages from, you know, there's, and someone's, hey, can I, I'm here, can I give you a hand? No, 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 I can't stop. I'm too busy. It's like, it's like the very, you're, you're shouting out the very person who's going to come save you. You're, you're, you're shooting them down. And very often, I think we do that in our daily lives. When things get stressful and things get overwhelming and, and we get scared and worried and we sort of maybe want to reach out to something, you know, I can't, I, now I have to concentrate. When things quiet down, I'll be able to talk to God right now. Right now I need, right now I need to, uh, so, someone said to me, I don't, I don't want to have to come to rely on God. Like, I need a, whatever, I forgot, forgot what the context was. You're like, have... uh, how do you think you're breathing right now? <laughs> exactly. Right. It's like two fish. You know, two fish in water. I think Robert David Aaron has a little uh, uh, thing on YouTube. It's uh, two fish in water. Said, hey, do you do you believe in water? Like, I don't know. Do you believe in water? You know, like that's the so right. so we're we're often you know as a rabbi on campus. You know, I've been a rabbi for a long time. Often people will be rabbi. How do, there's got to be more. There's got to be something else than just working. You know, it's interesting in elementary school. You trying to get into a good high school. You trying to in, trying to get to a good college. And college, you got to do a good job. Okay, now, okay, n- hi mom, I got a good job. Now, <laughs> it's yeah, like, it's like, so they so they're like rabbi. So what else? I'm like, well, you know, you got to express your whole self. You got to live. You got to study Torah. You got to Shabbos. You know, it, you know, flex your soul. Like rabbi, come on, seriously, seriously. I, you know, there's no time for that. Like there's, there's a, I got, what am I going to have time for that? I got, I got to go to work. I have to exercise. I have to, uh, I have to, you know, watch my favorite, whatever, my favorite shows, whatever it is. And often it's sort of counterintuitive that the very thing that is going to give us a meaningful life, or as you look at the world, we look at the world, the only possible solution is get out of the way. Stop it. You know, I really wasn't feeling well today, Robinson. And uh and thank God I'm feeling much better now. But this morning I was thinking this that we're just gonna cancel today. But but like this 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 message is what the world needs. I mean, I not not just yeah. the world, me, me we and the world it. that we all need to internalize and remember that that the that that message that the plagues uh bring and and to not make the same mistake as the jewish nation uh nation originally made no no we can't we can't we can't right? stop so, right yeah so so w- when when the going gets tough and the craziness comes on us we need to remember to to reach out and to connect and to make our belief in god and knowledge of god through myriad opportunities or what victor miller said a you know you know, some of these people see this big yarmulke and and uh, and and this religious person. They say, "Wow, is you know that you're very religious." I'm not religious. So Victor Miller says the difference between a very religious person and a very you know and a, and a, 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 a very great person and a non-great person is the amount of times they think about God, right. the more the amount that they interact with God in the Torah. Of course, you know the Torah is a formula to. Uh, to connect to God, uh, but 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 um, the you know we walk in the street, look at the trees, look at the grass, look at the leaves. Like right? Victor Miller says, like the, each leaf, you know, is able to turn sunlight and carbon dioxide and moisture into wood. Right? You, you see your children, right? You, your, your children running around, they're able to walk and and jump and and uh, and and you know we just we. <coughs> Excuse me. We we uh, we we live in a world of miracles, and just like we interact with our mom, or hopefully, are fortunate enough to interact with our mom or our family, and we're so convinced that they are our biological parents, even though we don't know that for a fact. In the same way, we need to be so involved with the infinite, with God, talking to God, appreciating God, thanking God, 
noticing the hand of God and and uh, and in that way um, become come that knowledge so that when the going gets crazy, we're reminded that or even before the going gets crazy, we're reminded that we can and desperately need to have a relationship with this infinite. What do you say, Robert? I actually, I actually heard a really beautiful thought this morning um, that totally is in sync with this message and the word that you just said, relationship. And um, that was, you know, if you think of, if you think of like your boyfriend or your, or your wife, you know, it's like, if you don't pay attention to them, if you don't talk to them, are you really even in a relationship? And that's how we have to think about God. You know, it's like, um, it's on us to acknowledge the relationship. Um, and it doesn't have to be like, you know, I'm so busy and I have, you know, we all are, we all have a million things going on, but it could just be something as simple as changing the perspective and how we see things to acknowledge God in them. And then to just, you know, throughout the day, ask God to, you know, be with us during certain things. And it's just like acknowledging the relationship and knowing that, um, knowing that we're not alone in this. And um, I think like, you know, I love tying that back to the plates because that was God's way of communicating with us and establishing trust with us. And, um, you know, so I love that. I really love that perspective. I, I needed to hear that today, you know, when I'm super overwhelmed. With everything. Yeah, no, we all, we all need to hear. And you're right. That's very much the foundation of our religion, right? The, 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 you know, I always tell, you know, I, I, I often, um, have what we do on campus. Uh, you know, some Jewish fraternities, but there's often non-Jews in, in the in the uh, in pledge class, whatever. And I often tell them, I'm like, don't think you're so cool that you're learning another religion. This is your religion, right? The Judaism is for is universal, right? It's not it's not a Jewish religion. It's our mission as Jews to sort of spread it to the world. Yeah. And and, and this this message is to that we can have a relation with God. And the foundation, right? The Jewish people didn't really leave Egypt. The children of Abraham left, right? They weren't Jewish yet until until they they got the Torah. Accepted the Torah. The Torah. So, so so the foundation of that religion is that we have an intimate, real, meaningful relationship. And if necessary, I can alter nature. But but you know, obviously, for the world to to function, it's not, it's not going to be obvious in your face miracles every single second of the day. We wouldn't have no. free will if every time you know you didn't make a blessing, you know your your lollipop disappeared. Whoa, <laughs> right? You you wouldn't wouldn't yeah. have free will. So so the world is very much in a natural order. But if we have our eyes open, I'm sure we can both share. Uh, you know you know any it just just uh, so many times that were. Um, you know, just so, you know, I, when I it just, just, this literally just popped into my head, um, you know, when my mom, when I was a kid, you know, I guess anyone could really uh, um, uh, relate to this, but I was very scared of my mom passing away and just growing up, you know, just, you know, we are very, very close relationship. And, and um, the way my mom actually passed away was so beautiful in a, in a strange way it was like I, I literally felt literally felt a hug like it was just it was so gentle it was so um it was so loving and it was so um it was it was just beautiful and you know you know for the last two years of her life she's you know she's she really slowed down she didn't really talk so much but she still communicated a lot with her very loud laugh and amazing smile and and uh and and then the how how the whole the you know and and like looking back I'm like wow what an incredible gift and you know obviously not everyone is as fortunate to to uh you know there are there are some and uh and challenges in the world but i think our mission is to go through life and just see the and, and see and appreciate the gifts so that you know when 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 things are 
when things are uh, um, challenging or, you know, when things are difficult or even when they're not, but just to always remember exactly what you said, that, excuse me, that you're, you're living in a constant relationship. I'm constantly together with this so that when someone says something about God, it's like, it's like someone saying you're you're not your mom's daughter. You're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, sure, okay, think whatever you want. All good. <laughs> right. It's it's and it, in a way it's sad. It's 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 um it it's it's it, when I when I first um I, I was surprised. Like, what do you mean? How like when I first started on campus 23 years ago or something, I was surprised like how like it, it that that's it's some. It's still an intellectual thing. Is there a God? Is there not a God? Um, I wasn't really brought up right when you, you know you don't bring up your kids. You know, hey, God. I was one of those kids who came to you on campus, skeptical. To be okay. honest, yeah, it's just it's interesting when you, now when you're raising your children, right at the breakfast table, you don't prove to them, you don't logically prove to them. Well, if there's creation, there must be a creator, right? Hey, can you pass the Cheerios? Right. In other words, you, you, you don't have those conversations. No. It's just, again, and, and just uh, for anyone who's a mom or dad or, or raising children out there, just a tip. The greatest way to make sure that you have healthy children and that you, you're, you're doing justice to your children is use that name. Like just invite God into your life. Bring God into the world. I'll bring it into the home. And hey, hey, who gave us those Cheerios? Say thank you to Hashem. And hey, who gave you those? Uh, you, you can see, wow, it's amazing. Let's who gave us this money? Let's go, let's go give charity. Hey, who gave us a grandma? Let's call up grandma. Let's write her letters. Let's send her uh uh let's send her postcards. You know, so so uh so so and again, all, always uh focusing it back. The, the, the idea is that yes, to to sort of um, bring it into our lives, into our everyday lives. And uh, the fun thing about doing it to your children is because you actually internalize it yourself. <laughs> right. So, right. So that when you, uh, one of my favorite um, flyers, one of my favorite uh, memes is that, uh, I'm pretty sure you're, the very, you're, you're very much the type to see this. Uh, if you've seen that meme of a, a prayer book, a Jewish prayer book, there's like, there's like this beat up, beat up prayer book. It's like ripped and, and you know, like like tear stained and like a well used prayer book. And uh, the things on the, on the bottom says, if you find if you see a prayer book that is falling apart, it usually belongs to somebody who isn't. That is <laughs> amazing. I have to find it. I That's love it. that. Yeah. I love that, that. That that's the lesson, my friends. From again, like as you said, very profoundly. This is the foundation of our nation, and as we're we're founding our nation, you know, and and just just an aside, we really have to end because I don't go over time. But um, uh, the 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 three commemorative uh, um, holidays that our nation is founded on that reminds us every single year yes we're reading this in the torah portion but passover shavuot and sukkot is uh passover is as we spoke about coming out of egypt all the plagues and like wow let's relive that let's remember that we could have an int- infinite rela- in- intimate relationship with the infinite getting intimate with the infinite and then sukkot sukkot god took a- care of us for 40 years he fed us in the desert, 40 years in the desert. Not much grows in the desert, right? One person can survive for a day or two in the desert. An entire nation in the desert. Why? God loves you. He's with you. He Reach out to him. He's, he's together with you. And Shavuot, God communicating with us by giving us the Torah. And that, that is our mission, to live and to spread it out in the world. And that's really the, the, the secret to world peace. The secret to world peace is when we're able to get this message out. First of all, get it in, get it in, and then get the message out. Once we can get it in, we can get it out. That uh, that that we can have an intimate relationship with the infinite, and he's here, and uh, we just have to let go and let God. We're already there. We just have to sort of, that's, that's the idea of Shabbat as well. Shabbat is a time where we turn off our phones, we turn off our worries, turn off our businesses, turn off our stress, and then we're open to, to receive.
All right, my friend. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, best regards to Ira and the beautiful, uh, beautiful children. The Kinderlach. That was kinderlach. my English word of the week. <laughs> yeah, kinderlach. The Ira and the Kinderlach. And um, have a beautiful Shabbos. And may we internalize, may we uh, start with ourselves, internalize this uh, very, very important message. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Hope your family feels better. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Take care, guys. Bye.